Skeffington, granddaughter of Francis and Hannah Sheehy Skeffington, both monumental and motivational role models that have inspired me to become the activist you all know me as today. My grandmother left a triumphant example by fighting against the tragic mistreatment of Irish people, particularly women. She fought hard for a woman's right to vote as an equal member of society. Even more impressively, she transformed her own tragedy into triumph by coming to America and making known the British oppression of the Irish people. Hannah's motivation was active for activism was inspired since she was born in County Cork in 1877 to David and Elizabeth Sheehy as the oldest of six children. The Sheehys were a very politically active family. Hannah's father, uncle, and grandfather were all active participants in the Irish nationalist cause, influencing her values at a very young age. Though I always respected my father for his passion as a member of the Irish Republican Brotherhood and his later career as a member of Parliament, when I grew older, I began to notice gender discrimination issues that even he blatantly dismissed, like how he consistently voted against female suffrage bills. It wasn't until I experienced the limitations of the Catholic Church as a part-time teacher in the Dominican convent when I began to question female discrimination. Motivated to confront oppression against women, I abandoned my intentions of becoming a nun and went to earn my master's degree at Dublin University. For my progressive grandmother, being a female college student before it was typically accepted wasn't enough of a statement. Hannah campaigned to join lectures with her male peers and even became a founding member of the Irish Women's Graduates Association of 1902. Her bold and outspoken beliefs united her with a man of similar interests, including feminism, socialism, nationalism, and a literary world, my grandfather. The best decision I ever made was marrying Francis. 1903, in our graduation gowns, I took his name, he took mine, and we became the Sheiky Skeffingtons. We were a pair, a team, and we were both passionate about including marginalized Irish women as a part of the agenda for freedom of our country. With our close friends, James and Margaret Cousins, we wanted to get involved in the feminist cause, but the organizations that existed weren't very effective. So in 1908, the four of us established the Irish Women's Franchise League, an independent militant suffrage organization. As Margaret described, and I quote, its policy was to educate by all forms of propaganda the men, women, and children of Ireland to understand and support the members of the League in the demand for votes for women, and to obtain pledges from every Irish member of Parliament to vote for women's suffrage bills. We held parades, processions, pageants. We had colors, orange and green, a votes for women's badge, slogans. We became a picturesque element in Irish life. Women speakers who could hold our own, meeting hecklers and being good-humored and capable of keeping our temper under bombardments of rotten eggs, overripe tomatoes, bags of flowers, stinking chemicals, and we gradually earned respect and due attention. In order to fuel the growth of the organization, James, Margaret, Francis, and I founded a weekly newspaper in 1912 called The Irish Citizen, known for its progressive slogan, For men and women equality, the rights of citizenship, for men and women equality, the duties of citizenship. Typically, James and Francis wrote articles, wrote the articles, but I was more interested in doing things than writing about them. By June of 1912, we had already passed 10,000 readers, but our strategies were far different from other suffrage societies. We disrupted several meetings, petitioned against politicians, we put ink in mailboxes, and let me tell you about my personal favorite, smashing windows. It's June 12, 1912. The British House of Commons just passed the third Irish Home Rule Bill without women's suffrage. Eight other women and I from the IWFL are about to show the British what we think about their limitations against women. While the other women plan on vandalizing certain citadels of male power, like some buildings in the United Irish League, my target is a taunting symbol of British power in Ireland, Dublin Castle. The novelty of Irish women resorting to violence on their own behalf is, I admit, startling to their fellow countrymen who have been accustomed to accept their services in the furtherance of the cause of male liberties. There is an element of unwomanly selfishness in the idea of a woman fighting for herself repellent to the average man. But this is 
our country too. If we're going to be fighting for our freedom, we deserve the exact same benefits. Votes for women! <laughs> Unfortunately, Hannah wasn't able to write about Captain Zever since her bold behavior did not go without consequence. She was arrested and convicted, losing her job as a part-time teacher. Even then, Hannah was able to turn a small tragedy into a triumph for her mission. She began a hunger strike with the other women, determined to be recognized as equal to their male counterparts. She continued to participate in anything that would prompt the furtherance of women's suffrage for the next two years. In the Easter Rising of 1916, Hannah and my grandfather participated in the efforts as much as they were capable. My role was to bring food and messages back and forth between outposts. It was Francis's unbending pacifist belief that kept us out of the fight in the rebellion. So why, why was he punished? He had done nothing wrong. He had merely protected a young boy being beaten by the British. Francis Cheeky Skeffington, my husband and father to my son, the most courageous, selfless, and honorable person I have ever known, was executed without any trial by a rotten British guard, Bowen Coulters. I pushed for a commission of inquiry, refusing 10,000 pound hush money from Prime Minister Herbert Asquith. The trial was pathetically outrageous, and the guard was proven guilty, but insane, sentenced to 18 months in a mental institution before he was miraculously cured. That is not justice, and I will stop at nothing to ensure that my Francis receives that justice. If there's one thing I know about my grandmother is that she never stopped fighting for what she believed in. She embarked on a voyage to the United States to spread the story of the British government's murder of her kind-hearted husband. She toured the States for a year and a half, telling Irish Americans about the uprising and Francis's unfair execution with over 250 speeches on the streets and in accredited venues such as New York's Carnegie Hall. Hannah became the only Irish advocate to directly appeal to the President of the United States, Woodrow Wilson. British agents and U.S. Secret Service carefully watched her every move as she broadcasted the tragic truth about, about Irish oppression. The, the courage and tenacity of her U.S. tour was praised by the leader of the Friends of Irish Freedom, John Deboy, for doing more real good for the Irish cause than all of the past 25 years. With the tragic death of her husband, burning in her soul. She triumphed in awakening America to the British oppression of the Irish people. In 2016, I followed in my grandmother's footsteps for three months filming my documentary, Hannah and Me, Passing on the Flame. I never met my grandmother, but as I continued in her footsteps, I felt closer and closer to her indomitable spirit. With my grandmother on my shoulder, her countless triumphs engraved as my origins, I've given speeches about my, his my family history and even confronted discrimination today in an equality case against my previous workplace, the National University of Ireland, Galway, for unjustly promoting underqualified men over overqualified women, including myself. I won the case in 2013, earning the promotion in 70,000 pounds, which I used to help five other women who had been shortlisted. My family history of trying to address injustice was part of the reason I took this case. I'd never have taken it if it were just about me. I had to do it. I had my grandparents behind me telling me you have to do it. Hannah's persistence to combat not only the Irishman's freedom, but the equal freedom of Irish women has become her legacy as one of Ireland's most well-known suffragettes. My grandmother has taught me that in the face of tragedy, no matter who I'm up against, I can prevail triumphantly for the greater good. In her memory, exactly 100 years after her shocking example of rebellion as a powerful advocate for women's suffrage, I stood in the same place she stood, and I swung.